Hello, welcome back to the Spiders Web. And as you can see on the table in front of us, we have my um, Revenant Cavalry squad from Mantics um, Kings of War. Uh, you can also see that one is just grey. Why is it grey? Well, this is the one we're going to be painting in this series, just to show you how I did it. Um, I think you've seen some of these before, but let's have another look. I'll just put them to one side so I can focus on each one individually. Uh, this is the one we're going to be painting now. Um, I'm also going to be showing you how to straighten these rather bent and warped lances and any other bits of bent. Uh, resin, plastic, whatever you want to call it um, in other games as well so, uh, so this is what we're going to be painting first um, as you can see we have ribs showing, we have sinew, we have bone um, still a little bit of flesh on there and we also have the uh, armour Plating the saddle and all that on the horse itself, and on the rider we have the chain mail, the clothing shield, the feather crest on his head, and then again there's bone and armor plating. So there's a mix of things that are really the same on both models. And this is how we're going to be uh, looking towards it being. Oh, this is how we're looking at it being when it's finished, or as near as damn it. Um, the base is slightly different on these. Um, on the ones at the front, as you may notice, I'll take this one. There is grass and it's sand at the front painted up and towards the back it's looking as though it's uh, churned up earth and on the back ones, the back rank it's the churned up earth um, we'll be showing you how I do that as well but it's basically just to show that um, the horses have actually trampled on the grass and the soil and uh, while well, they've been uh, galloping into uh, into battle, so that's why I've done the bases slightly different on the front ones to the back ones. But that's that. So what I want to do now is I'm just going to step away, put the kettle on, and when I come back, we're going to be starting painting your man here. I will see you in a few minutes. Hello, I'm back. And I know I said it will be, I'll say in a few minutes, but accurately, it has been a few minutes for me, but it's only been a few seconds for you. Um, <laughs> I've had to wait until the kettle boils, and I'm going to show you now how to straighten up the lances. Okay, so what we need is hot water, fresh out of kettle. Mm. Seems strange with it not being infused with tea or or having uh, coffee dissolved in it. Oh well, never mind. And just dunk your model straight in for a couple of seconds. Take it out. And as you can see, it's very, very bendy now. You can position it. There you go. That's it. That's how you straighten bendy plastic parts. Anything that's warped, or anything from these minis that's how you bend it I'll show you again as you can see we have a bent lance place it's into the 
water, take it out and it goes all floppy and malleable. You just position it how you want it and once it cools it's done. Very very simple. That's how it's done. I wouldn't attempt it on anything like that because I supposed to be bent. Okay? <laughs> oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Right. So, that's that. A cup of hot water out of the way. Now, I'm going to lower the camera and then you can see what I'm doing properly here. Right. Okay, not be a second. Now, let's get started. As you can see on some of these, not quite got into the ujit, uh, into the crevices with these. So I'm just going to go over and tear up a little bit of where I've missed. So what we need is a little bit of the Warplock bronze. And I'm going to be showing you the, um, the paint in a little more detail with the names and such because um, a lot of people have been asking, especially in my earlier videos, um, of what paints I've used. So just so you can actually keep up with what I'm using, um, I'm going to show you the pots from now on in much clearer and a much longer time just so you can make a note of what's being used. And uh, I hope that helps. So that one's not been done. I've missed in here as well. You might be able to just see there. So we're just... There we are. Is that okay? Yeah, that's okay. That's silver. Uh, that's okay. That's okay. Any of the others? Yep, they're all fine. Okay, so what we're going to be doing now is doing all the um, armor plating. We'll bring in our trusty pallets and some of this warplock bronze. Still using this one and add a little bit of water. And then we can make a start. Now it's been a while since I did these, so I'm just going to keep these. I'm going to keep one of the horses side on in front of me so I can see exactly what colours I've used, where I've used them, and uh, well, basically so I can remind myself. Um, because I'm trying now to get all my mini miniatures based onto the corresponding. Um, movement trays because um, I'm doing these with it being kings of war and you don't take the miniatures off when you've caused damage um, I'm actually fixing mine onto the movement trays so I've done wraiths, I've done my werewolves and I've done my zombies ghouls and is there any others? oh yeah I did my um, what we call it, uh, Belfire Catapult as well. So I will show you those in a later video. Once I've got them all done I will have my army on full display. Uh, take some photographs. Let me have a proper look and see what you think.
So as you can see we're going over all the metallic or what's going to be metallic areas of this model in the uh, Warplock Bronze. I'm assuming that is um, for its ears. I'm just going to do the um, over its uh, under its face. I'm assuming it has some form of special biological uh, terminology for that. It's not the front of his face, you know, like a dog won't have a muzzle and the cat will have something else and I don't know. But I'm not very equestrian, so if anybody knows please leave a comment in the uh, in the comment section. Let me know exactly what that part is on the on the horse, the front of the face. I probably do know it and as soon as I hear it I say, oh yes, so it is. But uh, <laughs> one of those things. Okay, so we're going with blue now for the. In fact, no, we're not. So we're going for the bleached bone. Look, not bleached bone. What is it? Screaming skull. That was it. I don't have much of this left. I need to replace. Oops. I need to replace this one and the Abaddon black because I'm running out. But this is the this is the um, this is the paint I use for bone areas <coughs> so with a fine brush take a little bit of this onto our palette now I have actually mixed in water in the pot and the way I do that is just get clean water and I have one of these syringes um, I don't know where I got this one from, but you can get them from um, you know the refill kits for printers. Um, and what you do is just get some water into your syringe, put a few drops in, and give it a shake. If you can hear it, it moving around in there like it's liquid, you probably got it right consistency. If it just seems, if you're not hearing anything at all, then um, you probably need a little bit more water. It's it's one of those things you have to have a bash at rather than being shown how to do it on camera because the chances of the microphone won't pick up what you want it to in a situation like this. But as I say rule of thumb, if all the paint inside is uh, rattling around and sounding liquid, it's fine. Um, let's see if I can sort this out. Let's, let's think. I don't know whether you can hear that in the um, after shaking it. <coughs> I usually do it close to me here so I can actually hear what's going on. And um, as long as it sounds as though it's liquid, it's okay. But you can always open up, give it a try, and if it still feels a little bit stiff. A little bit too solid, not very malleable. You can always add a little bit more water. It depends on how how you'd like your how you like your paint, I suppose. But do it as a few drops, a couple of drops at a time. Don't do too much because it's very easy to add more to make it thinner if it's not quite thin. But if you uh, if you make it too thin, it's not easy at all to get it back to a usable consistency you've just made an expensive wash I don't know in some cases you may want a wash but for the majority of the part you want a paint hang on is that it isn't what am I doing ok that isn't bone that is So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to oh, 
take a little bit of kitchen roll and just go over after soaking it in water to get up the majority of the paint now yeah just dry it off a little bit that won't do fine so as you can see from the I've got a blue the main body is blue is red the sleeves are blue I know very strange combination but now oh, what the hell I'm a very strange person you may not have noticed right so that is our rider done now it's time to make a start on the horse and we're looking now where all the bone areas are on the horse when you've got the skull area coming down here that's been tinted pink no it shouldn't have been just add a little bit more highlights the possibly the and there okay so we've had a little bit of um, tinting on this old one or this previously painted one rather um, but we have as we say the skull well it's shown but there's a lot of sinew um, attached to the skull same down here with the um, legs and there are some noisy people around here so now we've seen where the bones are we also have bones here in the chest area how have I done those? let's have a look yeah all I've done is uh, just painted them I haven't bothered with um, trying to make it uh, terribly fancy because once the rider's on it you won't get to see it not very well anyway so let's just get on with doing the bony parts I won't shut up I'm going to keep pausing every once in a while just for check that we're still on camera because I noticed in the last lot of videos that I was doing um, I kept going off camera and um, that's when I was doing the um, oh dear the librarian for the uh, Blood Angels um, minis for uh, Space Hulk and it seems a waste of time me actually trying to show you how to do these paintings and then going off camera so you can't actually see what I'm doing <laughs> oh dear next well we normally go with a little bit of pink for the sinewy areas um, so we get a spot of when I say spot quite literally mean a spot as you can see now usually I'm trying I try my best with some things not to show you how I mix my paint but with this one I'm trying best to show you because it's a mix um, well not because it's a mix it's just because I want to try and I'm using these rank and file jobs as instructional of how I paint how I mix what paints I use um, things like the Space Hulk um, minis I'm doing there's more of a how I achieve the effects 
rather than teaching you how to paint it. Um, right, so what do we have? Well, we had some red though. I'm now going to wash my brush to get the red off before I go into my next colour because we want a lot more. The red I used, as you saw earlier, was Evil Sun Scarlet. I'm going to mix it in with some white scar. And uh, we want a lot more of this than we do the red. The red is such a very strong, powerful colour. It does swamp out other things, as you can see, with the amount of white I put in the still a fairly dark pink colour which is not what we really want. So I'm going to add a little bit of water in with that as well just to make it malleable 